The flat takeoff is the key to everything. If you can figure out the techniques for performing a flat takeoff and developing that muscle memory for controlling the boat for a flat takeoff, it opens up the rest of the world. If you're watching this video, it's because you just got your UFO, you got it put together, you got water, you got wind, uh, and now you just want some uh, pointers into how to get started. This is great. My name is Kelly. Uh, I've been foiling for a little over a year. I figured out a lot of things on my own and uh, a lot of what not to do. Uh, and of course, uh, a lot of it I learned uh, just by looking at videos. Now, uh, if you go to YouTube and you look up uh, foiling UFOs, uh, you'll find a lot of videos of guys just ripping around 20 knots, that nice uh, heel to windward. Uh, but I really haven't found anything that talks about the learning process of getting to that point. So I'm going to offer up a few tips today to help get you there. Uh, and in my opinion, the flat takeoff is the key to everything. Instead of just being a passenger on the boat, you're now the pilot. And you can work on going fast. You can work on getting that uh, heel to windward. You can work on your tacks, your jibes. Again, learning the flat takeoff is going to help you with the rest of your foiling journey. A buddy of mine uh, caught a couple of pictures on my maiden voyage and um, and that's how I spent you know, the first month and a half to two months uh, after just riding uh, on my UFO. Like I was getting flight time, but it was just a balancing act. The boat was the one driving the show, not me. Uh, it was very fun. I was getting frustrated that I didn't look like any of those folks that I saw on YouTube. I was also getting a little fatigued in riding a capsized boat over and over again. But I finally just got fed up with it. I said, okay, I've got to just start being very analytical with what I do and because I, I want to start figuring this out. I want to stop capsizing and I want to be in charge of the boat. So I came up with this experiment whereby I kept the rudder as centered as possible. I wasn't gonna throw my weight around and I just was gonna focus on the main sheet. Uh, at the time, uh, I was not using the hiking straps, uh, probably because I had just been capsizing so frequently that it was really a disconcerting concept to have both my feet tucked under the hiking straps um, and having to get out of it while the boat was uh, turned over on, on me. So here it is. I get going. I'm trying to keep the rudder as centered as possible. The boat starts to heel to leeward. I ease. It then rights itself, comes airborne. It then rolls on top of me. I sheet in. And at that moment, when the boat corrected itself, I thought, oh, that felt good. That felt really good. I ran out of water, so I had to put in a quick jibe. But when I come up on the other side, yeah, you can see... I'm, I'm looking at my buddy who's filming and I think, okay, I can do this. There's something that I just did that I'm going to try to replicate. So again, I reassume my position. I've got one foot in the hiking strap and I'm trying to, to replicate what I had just done. Uh, you can see me easing when it, when it heals to leeward. Um, but whenever I needed to power up and to get that speed, that foiling speed, I re my hip flexors, my abs, I was really over taxing them because I couldn't get the leverage that I needed to. So uh, you can see right there, my, my hips and my abs just basically gave up. And I thought, okay, I need more leverage. I'm gonna put both feet in the hiking straps and now I'm gonna give this a shot. So you can see right here, you get a little puff of wind. I get airborne and here is my first official flight, fully in control. I'm uh, using the main sheet as my roll control. Okay, so here are the things that I uh, think about when I'm uh, setting up for a uh, flat takeoff. And frankly, if I've been off the water for a few weeks, I will really focus on uh, a flat takeoff just to make sure I've got that muscle memory uh, dialed in before I start doing some, some of the more advanced takeoff uh, techniques or trying to get uh, super fast on this boat. Um, for the setup, I know there's uh, there are folks out there who advocate for a very uh, shallow wand height uh, when you're starting off. I would argue against that. In fact, I've started brand new foilers with just a full wand extension um, because once you get up, the, the thing that's really gonna drive home the muscle memory for you is being able to make those sheet-in corrections and ease corrections 
And if your training wheels are touching down on the water before you put those corrections in, you're not gonna feel it. And for me, uh, that's, that's when it hit home and I went from a uh, passenger to a pilot on this boat. So for a wand height, I would go for about, at a minimum, I do at least three quarters down. Uh, and then uh, once you get it, you're gonna be going to full wand height right away. So uh, uh, that's where I would set that. For your uh, main foil position, it should be in the uh, uh, middle gate. Uh, for your rudder uh, foil position, you want to see about three to four threads of the uh, control rod uh, visible forward of the uh, rudder knob. Uh, that's going to be just about the, the neutral position. And then for your butt position, just center it up right on the uh, on pad number two. This is just a starting point. So the way it works is you set up like this. You try to fly. If the nose is coming out of the water too early, maybe you scoot forward a little bit for your next flight. Or maybe you adjust the rudder trim to give you a little bit more uh, nose down uh, trim or uh, programming in uh, more rudder foil lift. While you're doing this, you're not really throwing around any body weight. Uh, it's just in between flights. So once you have figured out that when you're in displacement mode, you are trimming for speed, and as soon as you start transitioning from displacement to foiling, you go from trimming for speed to trimming for angle of bank and it's gonna be a lot of trimming. It's better to overcorrect than to undercorrect. Once you get that, you're done with the flat takeoff part of the learning curve for the UFO. You can advance to, to other things. Let's talk about the mechanics of the flat takeoff. First, I'm looking for a point of sale that's gonna get me the speed that I need to start foiling. Uh, in this particular case, I wanna go upwind, but I'm having to, to bear away a little bit again to get to a point of sale that I think is going to get me to takeoff speed. Once I've got my direction set, I now am looking at this and this. That is, I want these two bows to stay as level as possible. And if I sense that the windward hull is just an inch or two higher than the leeward hull, I'm immediately easing. If I feel that the leeward hull is coming up a little bit faster than the windward hull, I'm immediately sheeting in and I'm being overly aggressive with these corrections. And as we get started here, I sense that the leeward hull is starting to come up a little bit faster, so I immediately start sheeting in. And once I've arrested that roll rate, you can see I'm in the middle of actually my, my tiller hand reaching for another pull of the main sheet. But in the middle of that action, I can tell that the boat is now starting to roll away from me and I have to go right into a big ease to, to stop the roll to the lure. I do put in a little bit of a bear away with the rudder to, to help myself out. But if I had been a little bit quicker with the ease, I could have arrested the roll rate to lure right then and there. But uh, as I get going again, the boat is now up on foils, starting to roll back over on top of me, and I sheet in and get to my happy place of uh, roll to uh, windward. And now here it is, full speed. You can see how quickly you transition from sheeting into easing, but it's, uh, it's a matter of just being very aggressive and keeping both those hulls as level as possible. Let me talk about uh, a couple of the most common mistakes I see. The first one is throwing your weight around. Now, uh, I had uh, a young uh, kid come out. Uh, we were on the launch heading out to uh, meet a buddy of mine who's already on the UFO foiling. And I asked him, hey, have you ever foiled before? No, no, I haven't. I said, do you want any pointers? He said, nope, I got it. <laughs> I mean, he's a teenager. What am I gonna do? Um, and uh, he's an accomplished uh, laser and sunfish sailor and he hopped on the UFO. And the only thing that he was using to try to control the roll of the boat is his body weight. He's not using the main sheet at all. And as you can see here, he could have gotten airborne, but instead he is using his weight. If he had just done a big sheet in, he'd be up and foiling and in control. 
the other big mistake I see is uh, using the tiller to control uh, your uh, roll. Essentially what you're doing is just trying to balance the boat on wherever the boat wants to go. Um, you can do that with some success, um, but it is not a good way to learn, and it's not a, a good way to learn the, the flat takeoffs. Uh, here's a good buddy of mine, uh, David. Uh, this is about his second time on the boat. He is a very accomplished VX1 racer, which sometimes uses really dramatic and violent steering inputs to keep the, the boat under the rig. So you can see right here, he's there's not a lot of main sheet trimming, and there is a lot of steering going on. He's just trying to steer the boat to something that feels normal for him. But on a foiling boat, that, that's not going to serve you well. So uh, I'm just going to let this session, uh, this, this clip run a little bit longer because you're going to see how the boat's going to take off again. Watch the sail. See, there's a little bit of trim that he's doing right there. And then it just stops as the boat's accelerating and it's all rudder. He's balanced, balancing, balancing, and now he's now he's off to the races. <laughs> it's fun. It's it's a wild ride, but it's not in control. Uh, and if he had sheeted in there um, and then eased and sheeted in and eased and sheeted, like he would have been foiling, um, and instead of crashing out the way he the way he's doing. Here he is still, still going. And look, there's no trim of the main sheet going on. It's just all rudder, all rudder. I'm telling you, that's not gonna serve you well. Uh, so to be fair to David, again, a really good friend of mine. Um, I got a couple of clips from him. Uh, this one, this is a couple months ago. You can see him taking off, nice and flat. Look at the main sheet, look at the clue of the mains. You can see it moving around, that's him trimming. He's up, he's in control. That's what it should look like. I had, it, I had the uh, rudder trim, this trim for him here. So he's a little nose up, but still he's using the main sheet to correct. He's not throwing his body weight around. He's not doing the crazy steering inputs. It's all main sheet trim right here. I love helping people out. So if you want some personal coaching, I'm happy to do that for free. Uh, the folks at uh, Fulcrum Speedworks have my contact information. You can reach out to me uh, on this uh, YouTube video. If you got a video you want to share with me and critique, uh, I, I'm happy to do that too. So feel free to reach out to me. I want to get you guys up in uh, foiling as quickly as possible so you can have uh, all the fun that I'm having. Uh, that's it for today. See you guys out on the water.